Okay, so this is episode two in my music tutorials, and like I said, we're going to get familiar with uh, where to locate the instruments and sounds and how to place them into the step sequencer to actually create a loop. Well, the first thing we need to do is locate the sounds because I don't think we can do anything without any sounds. You know, we could start the program, but that wouldn't do much. So, uh, how to access the sounds? We can. What we do is uh, at the top right here in this in this uh, toolbar, you'll see the view browser slash plug and click plug in picker, excuse me, and uh, you can either do the hotkey of F8 or you can go ahead and click it and it will open up this. It will open up like this. The only folders that you won't have, I'm sure, is the G and the downloaded sounds. I personally don't know why that's there. I'm going to have to figure out how to get rid of that because the directory is empty. But in here we can find a lot of presets and... Wow, I just found something I didn't even know was there. Okay. Anyway, in here we find the uh, selected presets and sounds, but if you want to go directly to actual instruments that were provided in it, we want to access the packs. As you can see on the right, it says sorted packs of samples and patches. That's exactly what we want. So if we click on that, you'll see it opens drum kits, which sound like something we want to have. FX, guitar, legacy, loops, orchestra, piano, shapes, vintage, and vocals. Shapes are types of sketchy uh, string bass kind of thing. That's hard to explain. Uh, I will get more into them on a separate episode later. <laughs> but anyway, now that we have... Uh, located some folders we want to explore them a little bit and find some sounds so if we open up drum kit one you'll see here that we got a bunch of wave files and a sound font and the sound font is a special file that basically collapses um, and compiles a certain sound or different types of sound into a special file which if opened in the piano roll in this program or sound font editor or explorer you will be able to uh, have much higher quality sounds but at the lower cost of having to edit very well to uh, get by um, that's my perspective anyway but in this case I've, I've dealt with these sound fonts the ones in the drum kits are actually a cluster of all these put together into one piano roll and I'll explain that later but at the cost of not being able to edit pitch between each one at an easy stake anyway, it's a bit hard to edit the pitch. If you are into the more advanced stuff and it's no problem, of course it's no problem, but it's at the cost of having to try a little harder to uh, do that. But that's all in perspective here. So uh, anyway, if you want to, if we go back to the wave here and you want to hear the sounds, basically just left click on any of these wave files and it will play it for you. And uh, if you notice that the up here in the monitor, it plays. Let's get something that sounds loud. See that? At the top right, now I can explain this a little bit better now. At the, at, the, at the right of the monitor, you'll see these two bars. It's actually left and right. Uh, it's a left and right peak meter, excuse me. And that means panning, which means left or right earpiece or left and right uh, speaker for surround sound uh, purposes and stuff. So uh, you'll see that it's an equal beat, obviously, uh, equal sound, excuse me, instrument. And you hit it, it will fluctuate both both left and right. I believe top is left and bottom is right equally. Some sounds will have uh, higher on one side than the other because they're made that way, but you can edit them to be equal on both sides, and I'll explain that later. I don't think any of these are like that. No, I don't think any of these are like that, so it's going to be pretty hard to show you right now. But, uh, okay, so now that we've located some sounds we can use, we want to actually be able to place them somewhere. Now, of course, we could sit here and bang on these all day, but it's not going to do anything, and we're probably not going to remember what we just did either. So if we want to get it a little more complicated and actually have it somewhere where we can play and edit it, we're going to have to open up the step sequencer, which is located a couple spaces from the, uh, the browser. Here's the browser, here's the step sequencer. I'm going to open up the step sequencer and it's going to open up this window. Now first, you're going to think, how are we going to possibly make a beat on this? There's no possible way we can make a beat on this. 
Well, it's actually pretty possible. So the first thing we're going to probably want to do is get familiar with how this thing works and what the buttons ought to do. And right here you'll see it says Pattern 1, and obviously we can say that this is probably where patterns are going to be held. Patterns in music are certain loops, or patterns obviously if you will, that are placed within each other at certain points to create a melody or basically a song or just a beat. So uh, how I do my patterns, since I do rap music, I guess you can call it, dark rap music, as you can probably see by my name in the background there, it, uh, I do it between each instrument. Each pattern is normally an instrument, depending on what it is. If I do strings and it's really good and has a couple different strings put together to make one good string, then it's probably going to be one pattern. But normally I do like one pattern one will be hat, pattern two will be snare, pattern three will be kick, and such. And then I put them together in the steps and in, in, in the playlist because certain things I, I just don't want to go through the process of having to make separate patterns for different things when I can just edit them easily. So anyway, getting more familiar with this other than where you uh, go to patterns, we have the swing, which I don't play with much, but what it does is if I were to place an instrument in here and have it play, it wouldn't play, it would play faster if it's put to the right than, it, than the uh, actual time frame that it's located in is at. It's really hard to explain, I'll uh, get more to that in just a little bit. We have the graph editor, which uh, can edit stuff like pan, velocity, release, and uh, modulation, and uh, pitch and uh, shift, which I'm not sure exactly what shift does. Oh, I'm sorry, shift is like swing. I've, I've done it before. It's like it's kind of how swing works. Uh, I'll explain it a little bit. I don't play with this much because it has to do with each individual note. And uh, it's, it's, I'm not much into that. I do it, I do it in the piano roll instead. It's easier for me. And uh, the keyboard editor I also don't use. I go into the piano roll, which I'll get to in the next episode. Or next couple, anyway. I don't know if I'll do it next. Anyway, uh, there's two different ways we can activate uh, play from here. We can either do it from here, and it will play. And as you can see, that's bar lit up, because you can also play and pause it from right here. But you can't stop it. You have to stop it from up here if you want it to go. This little bar up here, it's a good thing to note. As of this point, from here to here is one pattern, and if we want to actually edit the uh, how long it is, we would do it from up here, where it says beats per bar for this pattern. You can either use the mouse wheel to drag it, as you can see it's getting bigger or smaller, or you can just uh, hold, uh, click and hold and then drag your mouse up and down to uh, increase it or decrease it. We can go up to 24, no, we can go a lot higher than that actually, I think we can go unlimited with this actually. Nope, only 64. Well, we're not gonna probably not need 64. The most I ever use is either 8 or 16 is what I fancy the most. But uh, let's keep it at uh, the uh, the basic form. You can also right click and hit reset. So if you have it on a weird number and you don't like it, you don't want to go through it, just right click and reset. It'll go right back to uh, the default state. Of course, you can always go lower. If you go up one, it'll go to one, and you only have a pattern of four, which I don't I wouldn't recommend. This is a good basic pattern. The best basic pattern I think is eight, but that's if you want to do something with beats. I'm going to show you how to do beats. I'll get the strings and instruments and orchestra later. Right now, this is just the basic beat, the basic uh, instrument placement. So if we go, here's the, of course, the pattern editor in here is where you can also hit to head a new pattern. And you can name it, and this little button right here is for color. You can actually colorize it. So if I go ahead and select yellow and call it uh, first loop. You'll see it's a little yellow. It's yellow right there. It won't be yellow in there, but it's yellow here. And uh, then this pattern will be yellow now. And it will also appear yellow, I believe, in the uh, in the playlist, but I'll get to that later. So anyway, explaining what these actually do down here, finally. Right here is where your instrument is going to be held. Each There could be multiple of them. I've had up to 35 at once that are instruments. These are, right here it's a sampler because there's nothing in it right now. Um, I'm not going to click on this just yet, but uh, here, right, this select is where you select it if you want to, if you want to edit it specifically in properties or in the piano roll, but uh, once again we'll get to that in just a bit. But here, here's where we want to mainly understand right now where we're going at. Right here, 
is basically notes. You can call it notes, but more like placement of the notes. So where we would click is where something would play, and you can see they're color coded because that can help very, very highly in the future, and I'll explain why in just a bit. You can left click to place an instrument once you have it selected, and you can right click to delete or right click drag and go, and it will delete all of them, depending on how far you um, drag. This little button, this little uh, channel, it's a channel volume for this specific instrument. You can have multiple and have them all have channel. This is panning, which is left or right earpiece or left or right speaker if you want surround sound uh, changing or just better quality. Here is the mute or solo. If you left click on it, you'll... Muting it is taking out the green. Putting the green dot back is not having it muted and it will play. Right clicking on it, hitting solo will make it so this is the only one that plays. And uh, you can add some other stuff here, which we will get to later. But anyway, if we want to actually get it here, let's go ahead and make a first beat. Now that I've explained a little bit to it, maybe you'll understand a little more of how it works. And I'll explain it more as we go. First thing, let's do a very, very basic beat. Let's go ahead and grab the kick right here. And how we're going to actually insert this, we can do it two ways. I'm going to do it the first way this way so we can get rid of the sampler. We can, sorry, we can left click and drag. And you can see that I'm dragging, I'm literally dragging it out of there. And go ahead and hover over it, and it will place it. And it will place any settings within it, too. All right, and you can see it says FLS Kick 01. So now that is inserted right into this section. But we're going to want another one down here. We're going to want a snare. You can see here's the snare. Now, we could just drag it, but that would replace it. We could drag it under and it would put a new one, but I want to show you the other way you can put them in. You can right-click and open a new sampler channel. You see up here it's a sampler. This is a sampler channel area, basically. Now these are different kind of channels you can do, but we're going to do a basic sampler channel. Do that, and you can see it puts a new section, and now we have two sounds. But placing them in here itself, how are we going to actually uh, legitly create a beat out of it? Well, basically what we're going to do is click where we want the sound to play. So let's go ahead and put it in both, and this little bar down here is the, the, the step playing area. Basically when you press play a little bar is going to appear down here. I think it had it a little bit earlier and when it goes by it plays anything above it, legitly anything above it. And the tempo speed will depending on how fast this is going is how fast this down here is going to go. So it's at 140 tempo, that's the default state. I like to keep it at that point. It's very rare I ever change it when I do it's for a good reason. So we're going to keep it that so if we go and play now and we're going to make sure it's on pattern. Hit that blue, not on green but it's on red. We're going to go ahead and play. You can see now I'm not pressing it down here, I'm not pressing the kick, but instead it's just playing by itself from the arrow because every time it goes right above it, it's going to play it. So if we want to make a beat out of this, let's go ahead and add the snare too. And what we're going to want to do, we're going to hit stop first to stop it. If we want to add the snare, we want to make it an equal beat. And putting it right here is not going to make it equal. You can see that's a bit off. Of course we could make a beat out of it, there's a lot of things we can do with that but we're not going to quite yet. We're going to make it very equal and very basic. So the first thing we're going to want to do is, now, now here's where it comes in, into play. The blue, I'm going to call these blue and red. The blue and the red sections are going to be very helpful here, because you'll see at the start of every blue section, I put a kick. But now we're going to put at the start of every red se section a snare, and now it should sound very equal. You can even see that it's equal between each. We're going to go ahead and do an example of the tempo, of how the uh, tempo actually changes this speed. So you can either drag, you can either use your mouse and drag and go down, or you can left click, hold, and drag, and go all the way down to 10, or can go all the way up to 999. But we're going to go ahead and keep this at uh, 110. It should go slower now. But if you go ahead and right click and go to 140, it got faster. Very basic form of how you uh, edit, uh, insert beats. If you want to get more creative with it, of course, you can uh, right click on this, which is the beat, and hit, uh, where did it go? Rename slash color. And you can rename it. So if you want to get rid of all that extra stuff, go ahead and name it kick. And of course, you can color it. Let's go ahead and make it, uh, make it blue. So now we got a blue kick. And you can also middle click. If you have a mouse wheel, you can click with the mouse wheel and do it immediately from there. It makes it a lot easier. And snare. Let's make this uh, green. Let's make it green. 
It's a nice color. So we got a yellow loop, we got a blue kick, and we got a green snare. And that's a lot more, it looks a lot more tidy now, doesn't it? Let's say we want to add a little bit more to it, though. Let's just get a little more fancy with it and show you a couple more features we have with this. Let's go ahead and, uh, what can we do here? Hmm, this is good. Let's go ahead and add the uh, Carib Shake <laughs> 007. All right, let's go ahead and add uh, Mr. 007 in here. And uh, what are we going to do with this? Well, let's see. We got this. I got an idea. Let's go ahead and place it right there on the last, on the last four bar and on uh, the second to last. Let's go ahead and try that. Sounds pretty good. Let's go. Let's try adding it to every other section in the same spot, second to last of each section. Let's go ahead and try that. Sounds pretty cool. Let's let's make it a little more uh, tidied. Let's name this Shake. Let's make it Shake 007. Let's keep his name. He sounds pretty cool. And uh, let's make it. Hmm, already have. Let's make it orange. I guess that's orange, looks kind of pink. Whatever though. Let's keep it like that, and why not add one more to make it end the loop and make it a little unique instead of just a constant loop, because it's basically this, paste it again. Now it's a little different. It's pretty fun. Once you get the hang of this, you can create a lot of amazing loops, and we've only barely touched one of the drum kits. If we actually go in here, there's a bunch. We're getting Legacy, and there's even more. Orchestra, we got strings. We've got a lot to go with and a lot to cover. But right now, this is just a basic drum beat, a very, very basic drum beat. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, provide a small example of uh, of how the buttons on the on the left here work. Let's go ahead and close this so so no, let's not close that. Let's just keep it right there. It makes it easier for us and it won't be on the left side of the screen. So uh, I'm gonna if you press this it will mute it, you can see it turns off. Now it won't play. But if I click it again it'll play. Now you can also right click and hit solo and you'll see that everyone turned off except that because that's all it's gonna play. But if you right-click and hit it again, it will turn them all back on. I believe that is mostly all, but if you're wearing headphones right now, or you have speakers that you can clearly tell what's coming out the left or the right one, you will be able to tell this next part very easily. On the kick, we're going to go ahead and solo this. On the kick, you'll see it's coming out of both speakers or both headphones, depending on how you're rolling. And once again, if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to tell. But uh, if we got both uh, going off the kick here, both thing, you can tell them both here. But watch this. Watch very closely up here when I tune this, this left one to the right. See that? It's coming out the right ear only, or the right speaker. You can tell right away, too, the left one completely dim. But we can kind of get them both going. But we can make it more dominant on the right or the left side. Once again, if you if you can't get it quite all the way, you can right click and hit reset. And now watch the volume. You'll see the uh, the bars up here get quite smaller when it hits because the volume's going down. And also, you could probably hear it too. Make it really loud. You can also see right here. Let's go ahead and unsolo that. You can go ahead and see here too that the. Uh, you can actually see the wave going by. And of course, you can actually edit this, of course. Watch it play. See that? If you left click, it will turn the style. So it can either do the cloud waveform, or you can do it this way. If you click it, it'll do that. If you right click, you can hit stereo, or it should show two, which means it'll seem to be the same thing as this left and right. You can see the waveform. I personally don't use that, and I find it a lot better like this. I think ghost mode is where it does that, and it's not. Yeah, ghost mode is where it uh, kind of fades. 
I don't know why I had ghost mode on, but there we go. What does long do? Oh, long makes the uh, makes like a uh, it. Uh, I forgot what it's called. It's uh, well, you know what that is. It's like a line graph, basically, kind of. I like long though because it actually does the wave and it goes by. I think it's pretty cool. One last thing to cover on this though. Now, I should have covered this in the first one, but if you go to options and go to audio settings and make sure, yeah, audio, you'll see here that the, uh, your, your audio settings might be low. My sample rate, and now this is crucial because if you don't have a good enough sound card, this will not render properly and it will, it will legitly mess up your song when it's rendered. The best thing you can do if you have a very basic, let's say, Intel Graphics Family HD graphics card. If you have that very basic graphics card, your best bet's going at 4800 hertz. Yeah, 4800 hertz would. Yeah, 4800 hertz would be your best bet. Your buffer length 4096 SMP offset zero. Use polling. Use hardware buffer. Don't use the 32-bit buffer. Keep that off. Use safe overloads. Priority is the highest, and basically copy this. Now, this this is what's really important. Your mixer is what controls your plugins. Your best bet uh, controls it, your external plugins from getting into your step sequencer anyway. Your best bet is sticking with six point hermit, hermit, hermite, whatever. I can't really, I don't know what that is. Don't hit linear because it's going to make it really bad. This is your best bet, and don't do any of these unless you have like a top notch graphics. I mean, it's not graphics card. I'm so sorry sound card. If you have a really good sound card like Sonar or something, then go ahead and hit the 512 because you're going to be able to render some good stuff. Now don't fret because you will be able to make some great stuff, great sounding stuff with that six point hermit, hermite, whatever. Because that's that's probably going to be your best bet. And there's some other settings here you can check out. Uh, you know, if you, and here's your skin too, you can uh, change the way your, uh, think some of your things look with uh, that. So there's some extra customization for you, and uh, it looks like we made a nice little beat too. So uh, what I'm going to do, it's going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to save it right here too. Let's make it tutorial beat. Ooh. Now, if you didn't, if you don't have this program, you didn't buy it. You're not going to be able to open something if you save it. So your best bet is to check out the tutorials you want to hear and want to check out before you you buy it. Because don't spend $40, $60 on something you, you don't even enjoy. It's not it's, it's pointless. But I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, here's a good example of uh, how to do this. FLP files are the loop files. That's the best thing you want to do if you want to be able to re-edit it. All the rest are pretty just other audio files. You won't be able to edit them. So FLP is your uh, basically your project. It's your project file, and you want to keep that forever. If you ever want to go back and check it out or look back at your past work, I have a ton of work, but I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and save that tutorial beat right now. And you can see it's up here loaded, FLP. So we will come back to this in the next episode, which I'll be explaining the piano roll and uh, basic pitching and some properties of each instrument and such. Till next time.